Michael Grady here alongside Nets General Manager Sean Marks reflecting on the end of the season and looking ahead as well. And Sean, I know it was a very difficult end to this past season and swept by the Boston Celtics. As that buzzer sounded there at Barclays Center, what was your immediate thoughts, your raw thoughts as that season came to a close? There was a lot. Um, I mean, it's, it's still pretty raw. You know, it, it's uh, obviously one of disappointment. You know, we... Um, we didn't live up to the expectations that we'd set for ourselves. You know, we we didn't um, overcome some of the obstacles throughout the season, and I don't want to make any excuses because there's a lot of teams that had to uh, overcome very similar obstacles. But uh, you know, we did not do a good enough job managing those. You know, from an organizational standpoint, and so uh, there's a lot of self-reflecting going on, and and we've had a lot of really deep and honest conversations, and. Um, those are the, you know, I wouldn't say fun things, but those are the those are the times where you get to really make some change, and you look back and say, okay, what could we have done? How do we approach this? Did we approach? The, are our processes in place? Are they the right ones? You know, from roster building, from the culture, from the direction, from the vision, and so forth. You talked about you know the injuries and injuries being a part of the game, but the injury part aside, when you looked at that series and basically the end of the season. What stands out that you, your staff, and even the players would look at is this part was unacceptable? You know, I, I think Boston, you know, w was a more physical team. Uh, and that that's something that we're going to have to address this offseason, you know. And not only address it in the terms of free agency and so forth and how we build the roster, but our current players, our current players are, um, you know, we all have to look in the mirror. And, and I'm sure they'll look, and, and some of them are already in the gym right now because they know they have an opportunity this this next season coming up, and I think they want to make the most of it. So, you know, whether that's in the gym, the weight room and so forth, just getting ready and getting ready for that physical nature because the playoffs, as we all know, it's another level. And, 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 you know, we were not, for whatever reason, ready for that. Now, again, we were shorthanded a little bit, but at the same time, um, you know, now we, it shouldn't be a surprise for us in the future. You've mentioned this a few times um, when reflecting in the mirror in terms of what you want the future of this franchise to be in terms of roster construction, the character part. Yeah. What type of character do you want on this roster? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've said it before, and, it, and it's, it's sort of a bit of a cliche. You want to be... You want people here to be part of something bigger than themselves. It's a team sport, it's a team game, it's not individuals. Now, there's certain individuals that are, you know, I have a higher threshold and talent than the, than the rest of us, but at the end of the day, everybody's got to be able to contribute. So we want people to be here for the right reasons and, and, and buy into their roles, buy into their roles, high character guys. You know, we want to avoid the drama, we want to avoid the distractions. I think this last couple of years here, um, you, you know, whether it was expectations set on the team or some of the outside circumstances that were going on in the world, you know, they affected our guys and our, and our group, both individually and as a group, you know, really poorly, unfortunately. So um, we, hopefully those days are behind us and we can move forward. And I think whether it's moving forward through, um, you know, this whole COVID situation and, and health and so forth. Kyrie Irving has a player option as you look forward to conversations this summer about his future from the franchise standpoint, from your standpoint, what do you envision those conversations looking like? You know, I, I look forward to, we have not had a conversation yet, so I look forward to getting uh, in a room with him and, and, and Joe and his team and, and we will we'll see, you know, what it looks like for Kyrie moving forward here and, and what he needs from us and so forth. So, you know, Again, it would it, it wouldn't be right for me to comment on the you know what what hypothetical could happen because we don't know we haven't had those conversations with Kyrie yet but you know when they do you know we'll see if if it's the right fit for for both sides. A couple things on Ben Simmons. One on the end of the season, a lot of speculation he would be able to play at some point in the Celtic series. Thoughts about Game Four for sure, but woke up before that game and wasn't able to give it a go. What was that stretch like and knowing how difficult yeah. it would be for a guy who hadn't played all season to get into the postseason and then also realizing that he wasn't going to be able to contribute? Sure. I mean, look, very frustrating from an organizational standpoint, but even more so from Ben's. I mean, I, I had conversation with Ben. We, we all did. We saw how he was trying to get back out there. Um, you know, I've, to be honest, I've got to admire that. When a guy tries to do three on three, five on five, and then you go turn around and get an MRI and you see that the, uh, the disc herniation has gotten worse. You think, well, you know, this guy's pushing through something that he shouldn't be pushing through. And, uh, you know, you know it, nobody wants to have surgery. It's, it's the last resort. 
but uh, you know, it's 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 bygone now and, and we've got to move forward with this and we've got to support him and, and so forth. But I think it's just, it's a little bit of a testament. One, you know, that he tried to get back out there, uh, tried to help his teammates. Secondly, it's, it's uh, you know, we just have to be careful not to judge people, you know, and if you're outside of that medical you know, profession and when you're, you know, when you're chiming in from afar, you just have to be a little bit careful what you're saying or what you're thinking because you really don't know, you know. And moving forward with Ben, so he's had the surgery. What have your conversations been like with him since then? And what will be the process like? He's been around the guys, yeah. but fully getting him integrated into the Brooklyn culture. Totally. We, we need to get him immersed in here, um, back on the court, you know, as soon as possible. Like, you know, we're not going to push him. We're not going to rush it back. By the end of the day, you know, we have a few months here, you know, unfortunately, but for, for his standpoint and for his well-being and, and, and for his health, that'll get him back in time for, you know, for open gym and then training camp and so forth. But it's about supporting him and making sure we have the right people around him and, and welcoming him into our family. We really haven't had a chance to, to really do that because it's been so busy in the season. So it's these, these informal dinners and lunches and, and meetings and so forth and just him having a chance to be, to be around his teammates um, you know, will certainly help you know, that team chemistry and camaraderie. You know how uber competitors are. They're not going to acknowledge being tired or fatigued or dealing with injuries or whatnot. Um, Kevin, when asked multiple times during the season about the minutes he's playing, he said, let me die out there. Wouldn't acknowledge, you know, any fatigue whatsoever. What did you make of the load that he had to carry, given everything the team went through this I mean, season? Uh, immense, immense. You know, without him, let's be honest, we're not in the play-in at this point you know I, I think you know injuries were a big factor for us all year long the Joe Harris injury um, you know Kyrie being out for you know half the season you know Kevin being out for eight weeks and then trying to come back and the load that was put on him then was was huge and and quite frankly you know too much you know but again the competitor that Kevin is I don't think I've ever seen anybody quite like him you know, um, that rubs off on all of us. And that's why I think we all have to look in the mirror now and go, all right, look, we owe it to Kevin, to be quite frank. You know, not only do we owe it to our fans in Brooklyn and the borough and so forth, but, you know, if he's going to lead us out on the court, you know, and how competitive he is, you know, we got to follow suit. Ask about a couple more positions. One, three-point shooting. Seth Curry's coming off ankle surgery. We know what Joe's gone through yep. this season. And I almost feel like... The Joe Harris absence wasn't given the attention that it actually, mm -hmm. you know, needed. It, folks may look at him as a three-point shooter, but he provided so much more for the team. Without a doubt. I mean, you think of what Joe gives us, you know, the toughness, the versatility. I mean, he's one of our bigger wings, you know. Um, his game has really improved where he's finishing it at, at the hole. I don't think his defense gives enough credit. You know, he's a physical defender. Um, and he's, he's bigger. He's able to shoot over people. You know, he shoots at a different rate you know, than, than Patty and Seth. But, um, you know, you can never have enough shooting. So, you know, we're, we're, we're looking forward to having, to having those guys back and having them back healthy, which we, ha we see no reason why they won't be. What kind of challenges it from the bigs standpoint? There, there are some teams out there with a six seven center, a six yeah. nine center. Um, you have a number of guys that are, you know, free agents. How do you look at this summer in terms of what are you looking at at the five? Yeah, look, we have our own free agents at sure. the five, so we will certainly work through that. Um, you know, I think for us, you know, as Steve mentioned before in the press conference, it's about having versatile players. You know, players that can, you know, can they play small ball five? You know, are they big enough? You know, I don't know that anybody's quite big enough to go up against Joel. You know, like I mean, the top tier true five men and so forth. But you know, when we see Ben healthy on the court, this team looks quite different. You know, and, and, and the versatility of what Ben gives us, whether he plays the one and guards the five, it's, it's, it's you know, quite unusual. And, and, and that'll be an exci that'll be, that's exciting for our coaches to have to, to have to try and figure that one out, you know. Uh, speaking of the coaches, Steve Nash, you talked about, you know, looking in the mirror, reflecting yep. conversations about, you know, mo things moving forward. So what's the talk's been like with Steve Nash heading into another year yeah. in terms of what he wants to improve? Look, r r really honest ones, really honest. I think we've both looked in the mirror and, and said, you know, what, what we could do better and, and where we need help, you know, uh, whether that's roster construction or Steve's, you know, you know, managing the game or what have you. I mean, he's been in the gym, you know, every day with me so far, watching these draft workouts, really participating. You know, he's he is a 
voracious competitor, you know, and, and he wants this more than anybody. And, and you know, I, I look back at the two years ago and we signed him and, you know, the same reasons why we signed him are still here today. And, and he fits the mold. And, you know, I'm excited to go into the season, you know, with him and the coaching staff and, and see where it takes us. Last thing, you know, when he took over this team, 20 wins, 21 wins, whatever it may be. And I'm sure each of those seasons were disappointing, fuel to the fire for the next. With the way this season ended, what is your approach? How much extra juice, fire is there, focus is there, given the championship window that this team has mm -hmm. to provide a championship for this fan base and this organization? Yeah, no, look, we, we've, we've never quite been under this right before. Uh, and that, to me, that's exciting. I mean, there's always going to be obstacles that we'll navigate through. We navigated through the last sort of six years and so forth. But um, you, you, you're right that the window, you know, it's there and it's closing, you know, every, every game that goes by, every season that goes by, you know, this era sort of closes and it's, uh, it's about how do we prolong it? How do we make the most of it? And how do we reach our, our ultimate goal? And the ultimate goal hasn't changed and that's to be the last team standing. So, you know, again, we owe it to everybody here. And I think we've got the right, gr to, the right group, to be honest, you know, to go out there. Everybody here has a chip on their shoulder and uh, as, as hard as it is for me to say, this last season is a wake up call for sure.